Almost 200 years ago, Britain invented the railways, and since then, countless train lines all over the British Isles have served as the vital infrastructure needed to keep the UK going. There are currently about 21,000 miles of track spreading all over the UK, and many of these lines were developed back in Victorian times at the height of the Industrial Revolution. In fact, the vast majority of our train lines were constructed in the late 19th century, and one of these lines was the Fairford Branch Line to Oxford. Serving parts of Gloucestershire and West Oxfordshire, the branch line was vital transport to many people, particularly local commuters and those who worked within Whitney's famous blanket industry. The Fairford branch line was built in two stages, and the line from Fairford to Whitney was constructed in 1873 by the Whitney Railway Company and the East Gloucestershire Railway Company. The complete line to Oxford ran for 22 miles from Fairford to Yarnton, with stations at Lechlade, Cowmscott and Langford, Alverscott, Carterton, Bryce Norton and Bampton, Whitney, where there was both a passenger station and a goods yard, Southley, Ensham and Cassington before finally arriving on the outskirts of the city of Oxford at Yarnton Junction. For many glorious years, trains ploughed through the beautiful Oxfordshire countryside and thousands of people used the train service annually. In fact, between 1903 and 1923, an average of 11,000 tickets were collected annually at the station and about 9,000 tonnes of goods traffic passed through every year. But as the saying goes, all good things must come to an end. Dr Beeching, chairman of British Railways, called for many of England's train routes to be closed down and demolished on the grounds of cost and efficiency. And in 1962, the last ever passenger train ran from Fairford to Whitney. And although goods trains still operated until 1970, by the 80s, the vast majority of the Fairford branch line had been completely destroyed, and slowly but surely, all traces of its once tremendous existence ceased to exist. The footage you are seeing now is rather special. It was taken in 1962 as part of a home movie, and it documents the last ever passenger train on the line as it goes from Letchley to Whitney.
well, one thing I remember is that I w actually went to school on the train and the most exciting part of that was that if uh, a child passed their 11 plus exam, they were actually given a bicycle by the county council. So that was a big incentive to work hard. So you were given the bicycle in order to cycle to the railway station, which obviously was two miles away. Um, you'd park your bike in the bike shed, which you probably saw on some of the pictures. It's like an old railway yeah. carriage. Um, and then go off to Whitney on the train. And the most exciting part was if it was a foggy morning, um, the train was always late. And so we got to get on the train as it came through to Bampton, go all the way down the line to Fairford, and then all the way back to Whitney again, which was a pretty long trip and really exciting for children. The other thing I remember is going Christmas shopping on the train. We used to go once a year to London. And so um, we would get to Bampton Station, get on the train from Bampton, go to Oxford, change trains, and then all the way to Paddington. So no problems with roadworks or traffic lights or whatever. So that was a real, real benefit. Um, so I guess that's really my memory. It's great disappointment when the line closed and we then had to go by bus to Whitney. There was something really special about it. Um, the steam trains are quite exciting to take a journey on. Hearing Mrs Newman recall her memories really inspired me, and I wondered, what if? What if I could rediscover the remains of this once great train line in 2016? Surely there must be something left, some old shed or some piece of metal or, or something. And so I assembled a crew and we began searching the countryside to see what we could find. We came across this weird bridge-like structure when crossing over a stream in the fields near Station Road, the road in which Bampton and Bryce Norton Station once stood. After doing a bit of research, geographically it makes sense that this metal structure could indeed be part of the old railway, and the rusty old girders may have once supported a train track. As the train passed through Alvescott Station, it went under a road bridge, and this bridge still exists today with its original GWR design. But I decided to drive out to where Alvescott borders Black Borton, to see the old bridge and to see if I could spot where the station once stood. Gosh, I wish it had remained open. It would have solved so many problems for this area. I mean, traffic here, as you know, is, is absolutely horrendous. Um, and yeah, it, it would have been such a benefit. And of course, now in Whitney, they're talking about trying to restore a line of some sorts, but I just think that would be horrendously difficult with the number of landowners involved. Well, somehow I don't think so. I think, um, I mean, unless they built a separate train track alongside the road, I just think there's so many different landowners involved that um, it would be hugely complicated. I think they're probably more likely to widen a road than build a railway, which um, 